All right, welcome back, everybody. Well, this week's going to be a fun one. We're going to go acoustic, and uh, we're going to have some fun with an alternate tuning. So, um, hope you can uh, join me on this on this journey. So, this is "Love the One You're With" by Stephen Stills or Crosby, Stills and Nash. I think they've got this song under both of their names. But um, anyway, so this is going to make use of a very interesting alternate tuning, um, which I'll take you through. And uh, the song itself, once you're in that tuning, is actually very, very simple. So um, that's what we'll do today. If this is the kind of thing that you like and you haven't done so already, I invite you to jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell lets you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my lessons have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I appreciate that. There's thanks, which is like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page where I've got chord charts and tabs for all the lessons that I do on YouTube, just like this one. Uh, links in the description, so check it out. Okay, so love the one you're with. So this is going to make use of... Uh, an alternate tuning if you want to do it like the record. And stay tuned to the end of the lesson. I'm going to show you how you can get a little more mileage out of this tuning than just this song alone. I think it's usually called a C modal tuning, okay? And all that means is all of your strings are tuned to one note except for one, um, which is tuned to the fifth um, of, of that note. And Stephen Stills uses this a lot. I've got some other lessons on like uh, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes and Carry On. It's a related tuning. It's not in the same pitch. I'll have links to those here, but um, it's something that he used a lot, Stephen Stills, in that era. Um, didn't do it so much live in the footage, but, um, but I just love the way this whole thing sounds. So what do you do? So you're taking your strings and you're tuning each one differently. So you're taking your E and you're going to tune it all the way down to C. You're taking your fifth string and you're tuning it up to C. You're taking your D string and you're tuning it down to C. You're taking your G string and you're tuning that all the way down to C. So those are unison. Um, and uh, now your B string, your fifth string, or your second string, I guess, um, you're gonna take that from a B uh, down to a G. And then finally, your first string is also tuned to a C. So all these are C's. Those are all C's, either tuned up or usually tuned down. And that one's a G. And that's what, that's what you get. Depending on what gauge strings you use, um, you know, some of these are going to be floppy, the ones that you that you tune down. So it's going to take a little while um, for your guitar to sort of hold that tune. And that is sort of a pain in the butt when you do a tuning like this. It takes a while for the strings to sort of settle. So be prepared to like tune as you go along as you're learning this. But okay, so there's basically three guitar or three or four chord shapes that we're going to learn today. Okay, so um, the main sort of strumming riff is going to utilize these two shapes. It's this think of a think of like a D shape, um, and it's just that part of a D. So you're you're putting your uh, finger on nine there on the first string and ten on the second string and playing all the strings. And then we're going to do this shape on seven and nine. We're gonna take the same shape, slide it down two frets to the fifth and seventh. And then that first shape, this time on the fourth and fifth fret. All right. So you put those together and and then you just work on your strumming pattern. And 
there it is, that magic, magic C modal tuning. It takes a while for your mind to sort of wrap around it, um, what's happening. Like literally every string but one is the same note. So a bar chord <laughs> is literally all the same, all the same string, all the same notes, again, except for one. All right, so that comes to our, our next part. Um, so, you know, when the lyrics go to, there's a rose and a fisted glove, um, we're gonna go, so there's a couple ways on, uh, that you could play this, okay? Most of the people that are out there that are doing lessons on this, they utilize this shape, where you're leaving um, all these uh, open C strings happening, and you're basically just making your, your you're down on the sixth string, the first and the second. And it's kind of cool because you have those sort of droning C's going all the time and it's sort of mysterious sounding. That one fits nicely because that's... Those notes are very squarely in the chord. But you can go straight across, too. That'll work fine, too. It's hard to tell on the record what he's actually doing. And I sort of do an in-between. I'll do... That's sort of how I like to do it. If you've got the other instruments playing with you uh, to get that full sort of chord sound, then you can play these open strings. And it makes a cool sort of um, addition, you know, to that. But I sort of want to hear that more firm sounding chord on those first two. But again, personal preference. So do it this way. Or do it this way. Or mix it up. Whatever you like. All right, then we're back to our verse. Hit that low C. Love it, love it. Okay, and then there's the do-do-do-do uh, part, right? And that's super easy. That's just going between the 10th fret and the 12th fret. Right? Right? And you're playing between 10 and 9. And I like to grab the first three strings. It's like, how many C's do you want in that note? And I like playing that octave like this. Back to our change. Okay, now on the last verse, there's a very interesting arrangement that comes in. There's, there's congas playing. And when you listen to the congas on the song, the way they've got it mic'd and EQ'd, the, when you hit the conga drum, it actually hits a musical, it hits a note. There's a, a note that rings. In addition to the smack of the drum, you can actually hear a note being played. Um, and you can sort of reproduce that um, with your single guitar in this, in this tuning. So those notes that it hits are on 10, 12, nine and seven and i like getting an octave so i'm doing it on the third string and the first string or sometimes it's the fourth string and the third string and the first string it's the same thing it's like whatever string you want to pick but the pattern goes like this
couldn't even begin to describe what that pattern is to you. So just, just feel it. Last one. Get a drink and don't forget the shots. That's an inside joke. Some of you will get it. All right, but that's how it ends. All right. And that is it. That is Love the One You're With. It's all based on that C modal tuning. C, 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 G, C. All right, I mentioned earlier, if you're going to the trouble of doing this whole tuning, you might as well get at least another song out of this tuning that you can do. And so one that sounds really great to me, it's not exactly the same tuning he used, but... Um, uh, but it sounds still still great. It's Led Zeppelin three. The song is Friends. So there's a little freebie in there. So that was Love the One You're With and Friends. Um, and I hope you learned something new today. If you like this and you haven't done so yet, jump down right now, click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell will let you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do a lesson, let me know what that is too. And until next week, take care, everybody. <laughs>